pull up some of my on my notes. Okay, so I sent just in case I sent Julie all of the pictures today. Did you guys get them yet? No. Okay. Um, Where I'm going to upload be getting them, Jess. What? Where would we be getting them? I don't know how she runs things over there. I don't even know how you guys registered. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put manually put all of the pictures into your Facebook Messenger right now. Okay. That way you guys can refer to them. You can download them. You can, you know, you don't have to look at me talk for an hour. Uh, I'm going to do this right now. Let's see. Because I sent them to her earlier. Also, they're in my whiteboard. So, well, let's do this first. Let's see if they're there. How about that? Let's do some testing here. Uh -huh. okay. Can you guys see this? Susan said yes. I can't hear you. You're muted. Just, just the whiteboard with nothing on it. Oh, okay. So you can see the whiteboard, but you just don't see it. All the pictures that I added here. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm going to just send them and put them in your messenger. And if you guys, for future, if you're watching this later, we're going to, we'll post them in the comment section of YouTube. So that you guys can have them. So let's go here. Okay. Close whiteboard. All right. I'm going to send them right now. So you guys have them. Because there's a lot. And most of these I did myself. So I'm super proud of them. All right. Uh, heal your trauma. There you are. Send. Okay. Sent you the first round. And I'll send you the second round. Mm -hmm. Good. If you have a Facebook Messenger, then you have access to these pictures now. All right. So, Jess, I just went to your website and mm -hmm. went to the webinar section. Mm -hmm. And if you look, it has the webinars one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And the pictures for three, which is today, are there. Yay. So if you guys there you go. go there, you'll see them. Thank you, Barb. And I send them to your messenger too, just so you have them. Okay, yay. We're ahead of the curve here. All right, well, I'm gonna use my whiteboard today so that I can see what I'm seeing. And then um, let me get my, so I know you guys can't see this, you see this plain whiteboard, but you guys have access to your pictures. So if you can do your multiple screen, then you can do it. Otherwise, you can take a minute and just download them into your pictures so that you can scan and look at them on your phone. Uh, because this is, so when we're, this is so cool. I can't wait to teach you guys this. Now, obviously, if you went to a point of fitness virtual, which we are offering a sale um, or whatever, some sort of, I, some sort of opportunity in the, in the website to do the virtual online, like if you can't or don't want to go through the like physical biohacking process of this, you can do the virtual. If you guys have already done the virtual, I guarantee you, if you go, if you already have paid for access, go again, like, because after this class, you're going to be like, okay, because again, as I'm, I'm teaching quantum fitness virtual, like now I get to go back and like, like micromanage each part, but, but even just because I've done so many hours of physical biohacking now, all this clarity is like happening in, in the testimonials. So the thing that we want to talk about today, all right, and, and I, I left off in the last webinar with this. I said, I don't care if you're, you know, shackled to your bed with a serial killer out in the middle of nowhere, all alone, not a penny to your name, you know, you've got dependents that are counting on you. I can help you manifest yourself out of that. I can. All right. You, but it is, it is strategic. All right. So if you guys put yourselves into situations that we usually do with trauma, is this the pain reward program? Um, so from Barb to everyone right now, always. Yeah. You guys, you're only going to see a blank whiteboard. Uh, we put the pictures into your Facebook Messenger and they are on your dashboard of your webinar in the website. That's where you're going to be able to see them. For some reason, 
that are they keeps getting an access denied on my whiteboard for someone to see it, even though I have like the biggest Zoom package. So we're working through that, but what we made sure that you guys had them before. Okay. Uh, putting people in a meeting can say things. All right. So I am going to kind of break this conversation down um, and, and bring it out into steps. So those of you guys who are getting online, don't freak out if you don't see something. Go to your webinar, a registration on the website. The pictures are there. Or if you're in the Facebook Messenger group for collaborating this webinar, I have uploaded the pictures there too. Obviously, you're going to have to find the order based in like what I'm talking about because it's, I'm going to jump around a little bit with the pictures, but I'll tell you like this is the picture so you can see it. Otherwise, you can go back and watch it after. You know, sometimes my work requires three sessions of the same video to get everything. We've got a lot of channel happening here. So the concept today is how to manifest out of any situation, basically, or how to manifest, right, with just you. You know, you're stuck, you're blocked, you're broke, you're alone, you're sick. Okay, these are these are excuses, I would say, that I hear all the time. In one regard, you guys totally believe you create your own reality until you can't manifest something or until you get stuck or until someone says no or until you run out of money. And then it's kind of like, all of a sudden, do I manifest my own reality? And so I want to show you guys the actual physics of manifesting. So first and foremost, let's look at this. Let's break this down because you know I love language. Not very good at it, but I love it. And I love breaking words down into like underlying meanings because, you know, really the best way for us to teach quantum uh, physics is through metaphor, because ultimately we're studying a science that is invisible. So we use metaphors to really understand how we are co-creating with the universe, how we're co-creating with our bodies, how we're co-creating with other fractals of ourselves and, and really fine tune that. So I've got some base notes that I want to share with you. Christian concepts here. Mm, find it why you guys are logging on. Okay, so so first and foremost, this is the this is the manifest your way out of trauma. This is the webinar, manifest your way out of your trauma, right? So we kind of covered the backstory of the trauma body or pain body of, of how it happens, all right? And once you have a, a pain body that is creating, see, this is what you have to understand, is that you are not manifesting your reality from your desires. You are manifesting from three extremely loud vibrations that are coming through you. Me, myself, and I. Me is the needy part of you, the lack part of you, the hurt part of you. So when we say me, it equals need. So everything in your life right now that you need, 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 is echoing from your trauma body, all right? Because all you are is energy. All you are is creator. So when there is a need, there is a block. Like that water is turned off. That flow is not running, all right? And so it always feels like it's coming from the outside, but the but it is blocked on the inside. So anytime there's a need, we talked a lot about starving last week. We talked a lot about like that emptiness, okay? Those manifestations that happen. And the more that you search for someone, something to turn you on to get the ball moving, right? The more codependent you get on your outside world. But you were never ever here going, well, I'm going to need my parents to manifest. I'm going to need my job to manifest. I'm going to need this guy to manifest for me. Never, not one time when you came as a whole sovereign being with a body, a mind, a soul, chakras, all kinds of energy around to use. Never once were you like, I'm going to need some help down here. You were like thinking you were going to teach your parents when you came through, right? So that belief system is so shocking and it's so harsh once you start 
figuring out that you need help manifesting, it's it's such a false belief system that it causes trauma itself, all right? So when we look at this idea of manifesting, we understand that we are in, a, in when we are playing in the third dimensional reality, we are a believing in duality, separation, okay? Duality, separation. You come down here, there's black, there's white, there's wrong, there's right, there's male, there's female, okay? There's past, there's present. So there's all these things, past and future. There's all these separations. There's the yin and the yang here. And this is kind of what we uh, we get dumped into, all right? And because of that yin and yang, your body is completely set up for that duality. It is completely set up to exist in duality as non-duality, as non-duality. Just like when things come together that are so opposites or contrasting, but they work, that was the sweet spot you came for. You know, you came for the sweet spot where the dark and the light, the opposites attract, you came to make it work because you knew you were going to use both sides of duality to become non-duality, non-dual, no fighting, right? Okay, let's look at that word dual. Like to me, it's a fight. It's like a face-off. It's a challenge. So when you are dueling with the universe, when you're dueling with yourself, when you're dueling with other parts of your life, you are in a fight, all right? You are protective and defensive. So look at this word manifest as this metaphor I'm about to break down. We know that third dimensional reality is corrupt, obviously, in its nature. In its essence, it's this dual. Like it's dual. You decide what to do with it. It's in a separation, but you can, you know, two parts can make a whole, right? You could make a whole out of this duality, or you could choose sides, or you could feel like for the rest of this life, you have to choose sides. That's part of your pain. That's part of your trauma body, having to choose sides, this or that. When you're here to use all of it, every ounce of it, you're here to use all the pain, all the pleasure, all the yin, all the yang, all the light all the dark in coherence. So look at that word man a fest. Okay. Man I fest. What's the root word of man? Matter. I manifest matter. I create matter. Density. Material. So the word man comes from material. Okay. So when you guys are like, I manifest my reality, but you hate men and you literally like have big woundings with money, what are you actually doing here? Like, you've got to understand how this works. You need to manifest the man, right? The provider energy, the money, the flow, the support, the co-creation. So when your pain body starts to get really uh, black and white with feminine and masculine energy. It starts to get real black and white with wrong and right. It gets black and white with love and light and like the system. Then you are getting more separated from your manifesting skills because man I fest, I create manner, has turned very ugly in our world. And now it's I am infested with man. Think about that. Like our planet has become very kind of this idea of corruption through the man, right? Like so much material, so many rules, so much black and white, so much wrong and right. So what happened is, is we've always had this skill set to manifest our reality with the duality within, okay? And once that duality is moves into a non-dual platform, that's the sweet spot we call flow, flow. This is why inherently your soul is only abundance. Your soul is only freedom. But then you put a dualistic body, you know, you, you shove a soul in a dualistic body that is now conditioned, indoctrinated, right? It's downloaded with this war of separation where the feminine is repressed and the masculine, you know, makes more money than the feminine and blah, 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 blah. Well, you're coming into the indoctrination 
with both masculine and feminine energy, okay? Your brain right here, this is the masculine, this is the feminine, right? It looks boring and ugly over there, but it's super important for manifesting, super important for manifesting. If you're all over here, guess what? You're a daydreamer that got no money and you got no way to live your dreams, right? If you're all over here, you might have money, but you are really not that much fun, okay? So when you look at this idea of the dualistic nature of you, you knew that the pure positive energy of source that you were, that was going to inhabit a body, was going to be in a dual nature. And your job was to create oneness, harmony, right? You are going to harmonize your contrast into love. So the crazy thing about manifestation is when you start looking at your relationship patterns, this is why I'm about to do this relationship course, because when you look at your relationship patterns with men, if you're a woman and vice versa, or if you're in a man and man or a woman and woman or whatever you are in, if you look at the wounds and the trauma around the dual nature, right? You've been hurt by women, men have used you, like what's your story? Your story is only important to understand your manifesting skills. Now, you're always manifesting. You're always, ma you're always creating matter from something. So we need to break this down a little bit. So I just need a thumbs up if you guys got that essential first part. So it's either, you know, I manifest the man, the material matter, money, right? Or I'm infested with man. So you see how it has a polarity there. It has that only you have a dark and lightness in manifesting. This is why when I first got online, I asked you those two questions. What do you have abundance that you don't want? I uh, manifested too much man material. Or what is it that you want that you still can't get? Right? That's where your masculine and feminine wounds are going to be found. Yet this is your manifesting machine. Not your job, not your mommy, not your sugar daddy, nobody. Your body is all you need to manifest anything. It's like it takes matter to manifest matter because of the signature. You make the material out of your material. So if this is at war, guess what you're making? Okay, this is why understanding the pain body is so, or the trauma body is so important before you try to go out and manifest a new business partner or that big chunk of money. Because what you're manifesting with is the material. Like your kids look like you, right? Okay, they may look a little like your husband. They may look a little like you. They, if you're adopted, you look like somebody, okay? But you are creating in the image of, you need to understand this. And all of your creations that are materialized are birthed from your biochemistry, okay? This is why getting rid of this trauma is so freaking important. Because if we don't, you are manifesting what you want and what you don't want. It's dual. It's like the bittersweet reality. Like I got the money, but not the time, right? I got the dream job, but now I have no time for my kids. It's like, there's always something that has to give, give in in a dual nature, unless it's non-duality. Your job was to come in here and look at the war that was happening inside of you from your epigenetic bloodline, your, your you know, the timeline indoctrination, the apps that were put on your computer before you even got here. And you were gonna go, oh, that's a mess. I need to create unity in here. When I create unity in here, then I can create unity out there and then I can show other people how to do this because I am one with the universe. Remember, if you guys watched my How You Manifest Your Reality uh, free you know, video that I made using my chakra balls, it's like your purple chakra ball is I am the universe. And then all of the signatures that go down, you get to the red ball and it's I am matter of the universe or I matter or I don't matter. Whatever story you're telling is the manifestation, your root root 
root, root. I don't care if you create your sacral. I don't care if you show up in your solar plexus. It is your root that is live streaming in your behalf and behind your back. You are streaming three different, very strong, very strong signals that is coming from your root, me, myself, and I. So me is I need. I need help. I need money. I need time. I need understanding. I need a partner, <laughs> whatever. The next one, inner child, myself. See, myself is the conclusion. It's me and my body. It's my higher self and my body. It's the child that is made from the lowest part of self and the highest part of self is the body. The body you're sitting in was built out of 50% highest you, 50% low as you. That's what you get. Okay, we do get what we get and we don't throw a fit, but we always throw a fit. And we always like, this isn't fair. And what's the point? This is what we hear all the time. So with those two live streams, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. Now we've got a new bandwidth flowing, which is the body that says, I want, I want to share what I am. I want to share love. I want to receive someone else's love. I want to demonstrate what I can do. Look what I can do. I want to express myself. I want to know more about other things. So desire that comes from myself is pure positive expression. It's not lack. Only when you have a trauma body are you ever going to experience lack ever, 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 ever. Because if you had no trauma, you would see even things that you had not yet as a, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait till I can have that. But if you've had I'm not allowed your whole life, you see something you want, you might get a trigger from it. Well, I can't have that. I got no time. As soon as you filter what you see and observe through the pain body, there's where your belief systems are. That's where your habits are. That's where your genes are. That's what you're consistent with. And you don't even know you're doing it because after about the second four, uh, seven year cycle, you start to really be, be able to build personalities out of trauma, okay? You, are, you have built your personality out of your trauma. You are now the professional people pleaser. You are now good at being a perfectionist. Now you are good at withholding. You are now like it's running automatic and it's it become an identification. Well, you know, I'm just introvert. Uh, oh, I'm just gluten tolerant, right? So you've identified with your lack and limitations and you've made that your personality. Personality creates personal reality. Thank you, Joe Dispenza, right? So understanding this point of I manifest, man, I infest, right? You've got to look at you as creator in this meat suit. You have all the genetics, you have all of the energy, you have all of you. I mean, you literally have every ounce of everything you will ever need inside this body to manifest all that money. If you have dreamed it inside of you, it's actually inside of you. Still trying to go, get me out. That's why it hurts, okay? You can never ever lose anything. This is why loss is such a trauma because it, we have this experience of loss. But really, loss of the outside usually is triggered by the loss of inside. Well, now I can't be funny anymore because that friend moved away and she's the only one I can be funny with. You know, now I can't touch my grandpa anymore and he made me feel important and I can't be there anymore. You see, so you believe that when you lose something outside of you that you are actually losing a way for you to demonstrate on the inside and it's not true. All right. So there's every ounce of you that has a belief that flows through your trauma body is untrue. And it's also counterintuitive for your manifesting. You are using your counter intuitive, which means instead of going forward, you're going backwards to try to create from a memory, from a feeling, from a PTSD, you know, stimulated, like, you know, trauma cycle that's buried in your cellular tissue like okay if you're a woman right and you can't ever tell me this isn't true because i am a woman and if you get pms you're just more pissed at the world 
right? So that is a genetic PTSD of repression. Stored repression rears its ugly head during the moon cycle, during the manifestation cycle. Remember, new moon is where you where you kind of you give birth to the idea, and the full moon is then you man I fest. Okay, it's harvest. All right, you're gonna harvest. So if you guys are gonna move forward with us in quantum fitness, whether it's in our you know our membership group that we're creating for you guys, or you're gonna come you know come along with us on our alchemy journey that we're doing, you're gonna learn a lot about who you are as a farmer. All right, and the, there's seven stages of farming, right? Like everything is in seven stages. Every single ounce of you is done in seven stages. And you are going to create a, a harvest, the same exact formula that a farmer would use, okay? But when you are at war with either your masculine or your feminine, then you stay a seed, all right? And you stay in the fertilizer, which is the first step of farming, is to find the manure. <laughs> You're born into it, thank you. You're born into the nice, supple manure. That's your first step of farming. You are the seed, okay? And the seed requires the essence of the feminine and masculine energy to grow, right? And unless, and you know, unless you're Jesus, you need a masculine and feminine stream and you got to get turned on and you got to have an orgasm, hopefully one of you, and then you got a baby, all right? So with this idea of when we look at man eye fest or infestation of man, those are the two questions that I asked you the first week is what do you have in abundance that you don't want that you've had for a long time that you've settled for, right? Debt, weight, you know, old ball and chain that doesn't understand you, a buttload of kids that you can't be free from, pets that you can't leave behind, like body pain, like you've got baggage and it's, and it's manifested in physical. You've manifested your baggage into the physical reality, guaranteed, okay? Now on the other flip side of that, where is it that you're wanting that you've wanted for a very, very long time or needing even that you don't have? Some of you will not thrive unless you're in that big house because you're big spirits, okay? Some of you will not thrive working a J-O-B because you're an entrepreneur, all right? Some of you will not heal if you don't fix this because this war that is within is literally destroying the child, the physical body. The highest part of you, the lowest part of you built this body from the fibers of desire. It was like, I want to know all of myself. Okay, well, that's the heavens talking to the hells. And the hell's like, okay, I'd like to see what's going on in heaven. And they came together and there you are. You're 50% demon and 50% angel in a little living space, right? And inside of this, is your darkest density, which manifests as matter, and your lightest, 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 lightest parts, which manifest as energy, flow, abundance, and freedom. All right. So take a solid, you know, come to Jesus moment with yourself right now and ask yourself, am I all desire and vision and imagination? And I have endless ideas that I cry over at night because they're so beautiful and I can't, I can't make anything happen. I, I can't stop sabotaging or my body keeps breaking down or I don't have the money or I can't manifest the support or I don't know how to do any of the things that I'm dreaming about. That's because your masculine and feminine are not in love, turned on, tapped in and manifesting the baby from the from this. You have to manifest from this co-creation. So look at the relationship you're in right now with your person or the last one you were with Okay. And think about the dynamic of your relationship. If you're a woman, were you seen and heard? Were you safe? Right? Were you respected? Did you get the attention that you needed? Were you were your dreams fulfilled, which means if you had a wild idea, was your man excited to help you fit manifest that? Or was he lazy, unmotivated, very childlike and quite destructive? Right? Because what happens is when this harmony this unity is not created by the age of seven, all right? Then what happens is, like I said, the game of separation truly begins. First, it happens on the inside, and then it begins to happen outside. Because it is the people that you love the most that usually turn on you. It is the people that you trust the most that usually betray you, or at least in your pain story, 
You might have a couple of really powerful people in your life, but they're probably a little bit far away, right? Because of still separation. The belief of separation is great separation. Just like if you believe you're broke, you'll find yourself broke. If you find yourself alone, you'll find yourself alone. Like it's just going to manifest from the materials that it's created. You cannot create something that you are not vibrating. And now the here's the where everybody gets really messed up. Is they're like, no, I'm having the positive thoughts. I'm doing all of the right things. I'm working really hard. I'm studying. I'm doing all of these things. But, right, if it is not manifested, then it's not in alignment. It's not co-creating. It's not unity yet. And this is why I'm going to take this opportunity to let you know, when you start healing trauma, it's not just like getting over your childhood. Healing trauma is essential for being the, the wealthy being that you are. And when I say wealthy, it's not just money. Wealthy is to me is the opportunity to use your wisdom in creative forms. It is being able to do what you want, when you want, how you want, with whom you want, right? Abundance is that flow, but wealth is like actually being able to embody, have, and be, you know, not just be for one night, but be all the time who you choose to be. So the feminine energy, and we did this in quantum fitness part one quite extensively, is I broke down all the hardware of the feminine energy and the masculine energy by its natural form. Then what I did was I showed you what happened when it becomes traumatized. So remember, ego or trauma has two personalities, victim or perpetrator. That's it. Nothing else. There's different shades of gray in there. Victim, oh, I can't do anything right. You know, perpetrator, you're a loser. Okay, you get the memo. So when you are in that victim and perpetrator, you're, you're acting out two different phases of yourself, defense or protection. A lot of times you project at someone to protect yourself, right? It's like you're making yourself be bigger so you won't be attacked. You're, you're projecting bad things about them so the focus will go off of you. Or you're saying, well, I'm not the only one that's broken here. You're broken too. Projection, okay? Or defending, no, 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 I didn't do anything wrong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And this is why we kind of break the nervous system reactions down into five things, you know, fight, flight, freeze, fawn, friend, right? And with different people, you find yourself reacting differently there. Is everybody following? Good, gotcha. Okay, so when we're looking at this body, <laughs> this is gonna give you so much freedom because again, like I said, you could be in jail. And if you can go on the inside and repair the root trauma of separation of self, everything will take care of itself on the outside, right? I, I, a pinky swear. I have put myself into some very unfortunate situations, probably like I'm the Houdini of manifestation. I have put myself into the worst situations and the only way I could get out was inside of me and I pulled it off. This is how I know so much about how this biochemistry works, all right? So when we look at this idea of the brain, ladies, if you are a feminine woman, right? Then like if I looked at your brain under a microscope, okay? You would be 60, 40, 60% feminine, 40% masculine, totally normal. Guys, and again, this is, this is masculine men, not feminine men, you're gonna be, 60% masculine, 40% feminine. So when you hear, my guy's just not emotionally available, that's trauma, okay? Because he's got 40% feminine in there. He can't hear you. He's just choosing not to, all right? He can feel his feels. He's just choosing not to. Because when the world has become infested with man, then man is the collective belief. Man, masculine, matter. The only thing that matters is stuff. The only thing that matters is control. The only thing that matters is man. That's where it gets aberrated. That's what you're born into, unfortunately. So it's almost like you get born into an unbalanced state of being and the power of influence messes you up. This is why in Quantum Fitness Part 1, I asked you what the dynamic of your parents' relationship was, what rank you were in, who was the alpha, who was the star, what, what was left for you, what role were you able to have, what were you allowed to be? And the reason why it's so important, because it will show you exactly how your trauma formed in your brain. 
Did you have to turn your masculine way down? Did you have to turn your feminine way up to be the people pleaser and the intuitive knowing and the doormat? Did the empath so you would at least have a role because there was also, there was a sick brother who was a star and there was a raging alcoholic mother. I mean, you have to understand that you didn't do any of this on purpose. It was like the power of influence influenced your ability to stay you balanced and co-create from the inside. Because when you would do things that were authentic, right, you'd be like getting judged or attacked or in trouble. So authentic harmony was like, hold on a second, I got to check and make sure I'm doing this right. Because when I did this last time, I got in trouble. So most of your root wounds are when you were being authentic and you weren't allowed to come together with yourself. What would that look like in a child? Okay, I am very excited and I want to demonstrate. The excitement is feminine. The demonstration is masculine. So how do I demonstrate my excitement? I, my voice is really, really loud. And someone's going, stop, that's ridiculous. You're being ridiculous, stop. So now the natural essence of my masculine and feminine co-creation is to express through a volume that no one else likes, I'm wrong, okay? And then I'm going, okay, well, what's right? So then I look at my brother and he's getting a lot of attention for drugs. Okay, let me look at that for a minute. You know, mom is over here crying in her closet. Okay, I hear that too. Maybe that's how I need to be. And again, before you decide who you are, you're all taking it all in and trying to figure out what's right. Because you thought you knew what was right and it flowed, remember? It flowed. That's why you love people who you can be around where you don't have to segregate yourself or silence yourself. You can just, bleh, right? Don't, you, when you're around people that aren't bulldozing your energy or judging you, it is because in those moments, you can flow. You're funny, you're charming, you're light, you're aware, you're intuitive. And so when you get around someone who stifles that connection, you're like, I can't be me, right? And those are usually the people we marry, by the way. Because, you know, why not punish ourselves even more? Because that's what we knew growing up. That's what we were indoctrinated to believe love was. So also in quantum fitness, I ask you, what is your true definition of love? Well, for me, it was love is pain. So I kept putting myself into painful situations thinking that that was love. Love is loss. Everything I love, I'm going to lose. So why bother? Why create? Why desire? If you've lost your desire, it is because you have lost way too much in the area of love, all right? If you have been punished for the way you love, I'm sure you're still being punished. If you've been punished for being authentic, you're still being punished, okay? doesn't matter how old you are. If you, trauma doesn't have an age, all right? It just gets a thicker wall and we, and we get a little dumber because we keep doing it and acting blindside. We literally keep manifesting the same people to degrade us and we're shocked. We're like, oh, what? how is this possible? Like, okay, well, how did you know that wasn't going to happen? <laughs> that guy's not much different than the last guy. And, or that job's not different than the last job. Or that house is not that different than the last house, you see? So again, you are creating the house you live in out of your body, the partner that you're with out of your body, the money in your bank account out of your body. All right. So I'm going to pause here for a minute. And I'm going to see if there's anyone who has a question about this first part before I go into how. Okay, that's the what and the why. I'm going to go into the how and the when. I'm going to play the universe for you guys. I'm going to give you all sides of this equation so that you feel that with this sovereign data, you're going to be more inspired to get rid of this pain. That's the whole point of today's class is I want you to be inspired to get rid of your trauma because you being able to manifest with the unity of masculine and feminine inside of you is going to end the war on this planet. Just putting this into the collective is going to do the world a solid. By you manifesting all of your hopes and dreams, you can lead by example. By you getting sovereign within, you teach the world how to be sovereign. It's like you become the parent the world needs. But first, you have to be a parent to yourself. Does anyone have any questions so far on this concept? Anyone? Everyone's got it? All good? Yes? Are you sure? 
because you know I'll go fast. All right. So the first picture that I'm going to look at is it says quantum fitness and it's a white page with a gold quantum fitness and it's got a bunch of like bubbles of light. All right. And the reason why I want to show you this is because the reason why you don't become more in your life, you have different shades of invisibility is because the real you is a big, bright, white, huge. Usually the only time you're allowed to be this bright is when you're born. And some of you weren't. Like some of you even weren't allowed to cry. Some of you weren't allowed to demand food. Some of you got in trouble for pooping your pants. That's weird, but you did. In this stage, you were the brightest that you've ever been. You were shining. Everybody was looking at you. You were being taken care of. All your needs were being met, hopefully. You were allowed to express all of the emotions, whether it was happy, sad, mad, scared. You were allowed to express. You were allowed to demonstrate what you could because that was a way that that feedback, right? You were co-creating. Even though you couldn't get your hand to your mouth, you were getting fed and you were abundant, hopefully. All right. This is like, you have to think about that. You can't do anything. You're, you're in a crib and somehow all your needs are being met. Now, this is for, you know, somewhat normal people. Some of you didn't get your needs met. Some of you guys were overfed. That's a whole, that's a different shade of trauma. We'll get into that. But for this balance point, hopefully, even me at times, because I was in an incubator for a while, I had my, my needs met, right? The nurses would, would feed me. So we had the basic needs. Okay. So then what happens though, is let's say you get a brother born or you get bigger and your body starts to get bigger and your cries get louder. And so somehow identification of you being you is somehow now starting to be wrong. Right. So you start crawling. Well, now you are an issue because you're not just a blob laying on the floor. Now, me as a parent, I've got to protect you and I've got to clean up the house and I've got to do all this stuff. And so now you're becoming work for me. You're not becoming this, this essence of my adrenalized love. You are now work. OK. And so whatever trauma I have inside of me is going to be more aware. It's going to be more triggered because of you. OK. So then let's say that, you know, you are the center of the universe for five minutes and then you lose that. And then all of a sudden, it's like you're trying to navigate your family reality of what's allowed and what you can be. And the only thing that happens usually by age seven is you move further away from yourself. So let's look at the role of the feminine energy inside of you. All right. That is the visionary. That is the imagineer. That is the ideas. That is the inspiration. That is the nurturing. That is the, the flow. That is the, the expression of the energy, like the actual like, like vibe of you. That is your knowing. That is your intuition. That is your angelic nature, that very cosmic part of you. All right. The etherical manifested version of your soul that is not embodied is feminine. It is creation, creation itself, right? This is why a feminine body can create life. It can hold the life. It cannot do this without the man, right? Not yet anyways, and I hope never. But you know what I mean? It's like, it's because even though I have the house, okay, for the baby to live in and I have the egg, I still need the dude, right? To make it real. Because feminine air and energy is a theoretical reality. It's, it's the dream. It's the vision of reality. The feminine energy does not become real without masculine. What makes you real right now is your body. Like you're a real soul, of course. But if I was in a body, I couldn't see your soul. Well, I could. But some people couldn't. And they'd be like, you're not real unless you have this. This is more masculine, it's matter, it's material, all right? Now they say, okay, this is where it gets kind of complex because the, the, you know, the right brain is this, the left brain is this, the left body is this, the right body is this. And in quantum fitness, we use all those concepts, but we also look at you from the belly button down, 
right, is very, the root is very masculine, okay? And up to the solar plexus is kind of a, a blend. And then the heart is neutral. And then the, the top three chakras are extremely feminine. All right. Expression, sight, knowing, right? All of those ideas that you have within your heart, all of those truths that you feel that are real, that is your feminine expression of your soul, right? Of who you are entirely, how you love, how you see the world, how you want to experience the world is feminine. Now, how you live in the world is your masculine, your life, what's real, your bills, your car, your house, your friends, your partner, masculine, all right? Because manifested energy, it's turned into material. So when we look at the sides of the brain, ladies, you came in 60% etherical, 40% real. You were like, we got this, right? We can do this. We can manifest everything we want right here. But so then you start to dance and it's inappropriate, okay? You start to act out some of that darkness that's part of your fibers and that is unacceptable. Or you're too bright and shiny and that is not cool, right? And so you're going, which one's got to give, okay? So usually how it works, ladies, because you know, it's math here, if I'm 60% feminine and I can imagine my reality, then I guess the place I'd like to turn myself down is my masculine. I guess I will turn a little bit of that action and behavior down and I'll keep it inside of me where it's safe, where I can be the dreamer, where I can have my imagination, where I can study all day long, where I can read until I'm you know, passing out because nobody can take that away from me. But when I behave this way, when I start acting out who I am inside, I'm in trouble. And so I turn down my masculine brain, all right? And when I turn down my masculine brain, it starts to get lazy, okay? Because it's atrophied. So if I'm not using this muscle because I'm using this muscle, this one's gonna be sh little and shriveled. This one's gonna be giant like Hulk. So what happens is, and this is what I see mostly in the spiritual community, just FYI, is the feminine energy awakens to herself, right? And she starts to remember who she really is in that etherical state and how big she is and how bright she is and how much light she is. And she starts to chase that knowing and chase that feeling and chase everything that feels like that in this world, nature, animals, babies, art, music, science. But then it's kind of like, oh, the doing part is what trips you up. Okay. So now you know the, the seven steps of manifestation. Are you doing that? No, right? If you did, you wouldn't be in my class right now. You'd be on some yacht with pool boy, probably, right? You would not be in this class if you were doing it. But we don't know what to do because the masculine is also intuitive. And if he's lazy, because he's like, what's the point? I Every time I open my mouth, I'm wrong. Every time I get in a relationship, I'm the bad guy. Every time I get money, it goes away. Every time I build something, it fails. What's the point? Your masculine energy is your builder, protector, creator. It is your sustainability. It is your foundation of your manifestations. It is the fundamental root of you as a manifester is your masculine energy. And it is literally gotten extremely, it's aberrated in this world because the feminine energy being so big was literally repressed and dominated by the material world. This is the war we're still fighting here. And fighting is a bad word, but kind of like du dueling with, dueling with, okay? So what happens is your behavior usually gets you in trouble or your, your daydreaming gets you in trouble or you know not wanting to be the athlete your dad wanted you to be or not, you know, being the doctor that your mom wanted you to be, you're somehow letting everyone down by being yourself. So you don't want to let people down because love is all you are. And because you have not co-created that masculine and feminine love of yourself yet, you go searching for what you're missing outside of you. You're not really missing anything, but you know, your, your male brain is taking a nap and not getting its honey-do list done. So you go searching for a man out there that's going to do the job. Guaranteed you're being let down. Guaranteed he's this. guaranteed you're calling him lazy. Uh, or or he's so driven that he's not home. 
right? Because it's, 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 it's victim perpetrator. This is your brain. And whatever is going on on the inside of your brain, you are manifesting in physical reality right now. Right now, the relationship between your yin and yang and that co-creative, are they turning each other on? Are they making manifestation happen? Are they coming together in vision and action, vision and action, vision and action? Or are you all vision and no action? Because you don't know how, or you don't have support, or you don't have money, or you don't have time. So man governs two fundamental principles of creation, freedom and time. You guys are in quantum fitness one, like, I know this. Get it again, because you're not there yet. You got to get it 20,000 times before it sinks in. Freedom and time is the material govern. The man governs it. What do ladies need most? Freedom and time. We ain't got it. That means your masculine's turned down. If you do not have an abundance of freedom and time, your masculine is turned down. Okay, feminine, she governs space. This is why she always wants to take space, hoarding, collecting, dominating, becoming, taking up space. It's estrogen. Estrogen creates space. Estrogen creates space. That's what it does. All right? Testosterone creates time. It creates freedom. It makes you move faster in time. So estrogen, testosterone. Okay? So estrogen space and abundance. This is her governorship. This is what she governs in laws of creation. I am abundance and I am space. Okay. Now, if she does not have the masculine efforts to fulfill her dreams, she will fill her space with what she doesn't want because that's what she got. And it'll be abundant. She'll have abundant of problems, abundant of overwhelm, abundant of debt, abundant of body mass, abundant of BS, abundant of people to save, all this abundance, but it is not her creating her realistic being into form, into a reality. She is using her space and abundance to settle for what she's allowed to have. And guys will use the absence of the feminine to piss away time, get lost in time, basically do nothing in time, and they will, be, they will demand their freedom in doing it. You will feel like they're free. You know, you got to do the dishes and then in the bathroom for 45 minutes, like, you know, right at the perfect time. They have great timing when they want to get out of stuff. Okay. So when the masculine energy is turned down, all right, you're going to feel what's the point. You're going to feel nothing works out for me. Nothing ever stays. Nothing is sustainable. I have created classes and they fail. I have created money and it's gone. I have created relationships and they end. If your masculine is turned down, there's no sustainability in your vision and dreams. Now, if you had to turn your feminine down, okay? Turn your feminine down because, you know, you you were expected to be more masculine, prove yourself, do more, show up. Then you had to turn down that nonsense within you and get things done. So you're going to turn your dreamer down, your visionary down, which means you're going to be an employee. All right. You're not going to be an entrepreneur. You're not going to be an inventor. You're going to be like, I got to go work for the man because I got no original vision. Not saying that if you have a job, you don't have a feminine energy. I'm saying it's traumatized because you are a creator of your reality and you never created down here to work for someone else's dream unless it was also your dream. Now, if you work for someone and you're part of a collective team, that's different. I'm talking about manager, employee, piss on type of thing where you hate your life. Okay. That means your feminine has been turned down. If you are a baseline, collect a paycheck, work your 40 years. I need my retirement. Your feminine is turned down. Okay. That's all it says happening because honestly balanced, you are inventor, creator, player, you know, you are philosopher, you are artist, you are a dreamer, you are writer, you are mother, you are father, you are nurturer, you are, you are all of these things in this balanced flow because you have this body to manifest. It's like you get this idea of this vision. I want to paint this picture. And it's like, I saw Rob Ross do it and he was so effortless and it flowed. And then I tried to do it and it's like, mm, nothing happens because the masculine is not turned on, tapped in to the feminine source, which means what are you tapping into instead? This is where the root of your loss 
is. I'm gonna to explain to you where your loss is right here. Because you did not have your own masculine and it was not modeled by your parents to show you how to do this, you turned one down and because you have to be both because you are duality, you went seeking the other part outside of you. But here's the kicker. Because it was coming from need, it doesn't end well. All needs end in more need. So I go searching for my masculine Prince Charming to save me from this castle and this dragon, right? Because I have all these ideas and I just need him to show up for me and, and take me to our new home and love me happily ever after. Well, what if he doesn't show up? Okay, so what am I going to do instead? So here's where a lot of the feminine wounding is, is that, and this is probably what you're seeing in society right now, the alpha female. Okay, a lot of you are in that category. It is a compliment, but it is also an insult. And I'll tell you why. And I would consider myself a recovering. The alpha female has to become the man. But because her masculine is so turned down, it's fake. It's fake. It's fraudulent. And I don't mean that in a bad way. We are making it up. We are pretending to be strong. We are pretending to be dominant. And there was secret 911 call, help me, coming up from underneath. But then when we manifest someone helping us, now we feel emasculated because I should be able to do this by myself. So the definition of the wounded man in this reference is the emasculated man. The emasculated man is the wounded empath, all right? The, the emasculated feminine is the wounded empath, all right? So is this in every essence exactly like this clockwork? No, I have seen men that are women. I've seen men, women that are men. I've seen the feminine turned down. I've seen the masculine turned down. The only way this affects your manifestation, guys, is if you're not balanced. That's it. If you guys want to create real manifestations that stay and grow, like you want to create a little farm that turns into a huge, huge, huge farm, then that's, that's true manifestation, right? Because now there's an infestation of man. You're creating, you're creating a whole family tree out of you, all of your babies, all of your creations. Or do you feel like you're going 10 steps forward and 10 steps back with your creation? It's because your masculine and feminine are literally at war, all right? This is the war of the feminine and masculine. But the masculine behaves very different in a dominant feminine body, all right? So some of the characteristics of that is lazy, undriven, not very motivated, workaholic, but not for himself like just needs the recognition, needs the attention, needs the appreciation, okay? Highly addictive nature, highly addictive because you got to check out. Masculine, when it's wounded and emasculated, it's constantly checking out. Feminine wounded is constantly checking in. You see that? If you're constantly checking in, perfectionism, hypersensitive, hyper aware, constantly studying, constantly building something, constantly doing something, constantly looking at, constantly talking to people, you are too checked in. Masculine's too checked out. Now you can see why relationships feel weird. Okay, like he's not even doing anything I asked him to do. So the true beautiful manifested relationship would be that I feminine have this desire to create reality and with my masculine who is in love with my desire, we co-create. Because ultimately, we want to have babies from love. We don't have babies from like, I'll just do it myself, right? So many strong women have problems receiving because it feels like weakness. See, we're hiding our masculated feminine by even though we want help, when it shows up, I don't need you, all right? Or you're doing it wrong. Or just get out of the way and let me do it. Don't help me. Because what happens is that that wounding of that being hurt by the masculine is now her story. And guess what? You've got to be in love with your own brain. And this is so weird because like when I actually take you through the fitness part of quantum fitness, this is what we're repairing. So because you are this energy of infinity. And if you look at the first diagram that I, and I don't know if it's the first one I sent you, 
but let me look at this bigger. Um, it's kind of like this, this purple and, and pink girl in the sky that are all made of words and they're literally blaming each other. Okay. And so that, you know, you're blaming your father or your partner or your brother or the government or money. If you're blaming any of those things right there, that's your own masculine that's atrophied. Okay. And if it's atrophied, then it's also going to be in a tantrum, which means that what is the opposite of creator? Destroyer. So when a man cannot create, he will destroy. Now, that's not coming from a place of evil. It's coming from a place of awareness. And here's why. Think about it. If a man already comes to a home, but a man wanted to come to create his home the way he wanted it, how he wanted it, would he want to move into someone else's home? No. First, he's going to want to destroy it. Level it out so that he can build what he wants there. So if your guy is a destroyer or the version of you inside of you is destroying things, it is because it's not actually how you want it. Okay? Just like my son, if he starts building a Lego house and it's wonky, he won't take a few parts. He will knock the whole thing down in a rage and say, I got to do it all over again the right way. So masculine is destructive if it's not allowed to be creative. So if you weren't allowed to be creative as a child and build something out of your soul, out of your essence, out of yourself, then you're probably, your masculine is destructive. Now, that's very frustrating if your feminine is wanting to build a reality and your masculine is destructive, okay? So all of these little diagrams that I have created for you break down all of this understanding, like the flow and, and the idea of, of like intimacy is into me, I see, and this idea of connection and this idea of you finding your soulmate and your purpose. If you keep finding twin flames, the ones who literally destroy you after three to six months, that is because the part that you keep manifesting is the part of you that's destructive, all right? So the idea of this, this how, all right? is to first and foremost, accept. You have got to accept that this is not happening because of your father. Now, it could have been the, the very first influence on you. It could have been the first teacher that you had, but the way that we turn ourselves down and up is through practice, prepare, and playing it out. We continue to demonstrate it. We shove it down deeper into the, biomechanics of the body we first have a little war with the brain but see now the muscles are at war with everything else and so think about it estrogen dominance look at that word if, if your doctor told you yo you got big boobs you're estrogen dominant what does that mean for you okay well you don't metabolize sugar correctly which means you're insulin resistant which means you're pre-diabetic but it also means in metaphysics that your masculine is turned down. And so now you're trying to make yourself bigger with your house called body, right? Your big, big boobs, big this. You're trying to make yourself more masculine. So you'll be, be protective over yourself. Mas it's estrogen dominance, okay? It comes from a root wound of having to turn your masculine creator down early, all right? Now, guys, they're starting to get man boobs. We're seeing it everywhere even in other countries, that's estrogen dominance inside of a guy because he's not allowed to be a man the way he wanted to. He's not allowed to create the home he wants to because some builder built his home. You have to understand that, the, that a man would take the blueprint of a woman's design and build it to sustain generations, 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 generations. And now I'm not saying that that's like, there's no wounds happening there in those stories, but I'm talking about the base signature of creation is a man wants to do something in time, in his own free way, in his own free will, and he wants to do it right. The feminine wants it all done now. She wants it bigger than she can afford. She wants more of it because she is abundance and she is space. So she's already lived there virtually. So she's not excited about pouring concrete for a foundation. And he's methodical. Like, this is what we're going to build on because he's time and freedom. And this is where that, I got to have it now. This is where in year five, on your seven year cycle, self-love, this is where time starts to show up as your bully. Okay. 
when time starts to show up as your bully, because time is masculine, you start to have authority issues. Feminine doesn't live in time. It's all now. It's all now. So if she has to wait, that's a huge wound for a feminine energy. Waiting, oh my God, why do you think feminine is bigger? Why do you think we carry more weight? Because it's law of resistance. Okay, we're going to take a pause and we're going to ask questions. Because again, you may all know this from different platforms, but hopefully the way that I'm bringing it back to you is that you can stop blaming your last teacher, your spouse, your health condition, and you can start going, the root here is that I have got to come home to myself. See, self-love is not about liking the body you're sitting in. It is about falling in love with the masculine energy and the feminine energy and co-creating from the inside. Because when the masculine is turned on by the feminine energy within the brain, that's when your pineal gland opens, creates a symmetry, your own direct Wi-Fi. You don't need a job. You don't need a sugar daddy. You don't need anybody because you've got the direct connect and you have the masculine energy that tells you what to do to get it or to have it or to be it. See, it's like the energy comes through. It's pure positive. The masculine is excited to show up. He's brave. He's courageous. He's got energy. And then now the masculine can build out the desire streaming through the feminine. And then that building inspires people, places, and things to co-create. This is why I always say the universe is asking you to meet 50% of the way there. You've got to build this 50% before you're going to start getting help. When you need help the most is because you are not in alignment. If you need help. Now, I will say that you will be going, 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 and you'll be like, wow, I really don't know how to do that, but I can do this right now. And by the time you do this, someone will show up to do that. Because manifest, infestation of man. You will do it the right way. So first you build what you can from where you are with what you have. You do not run away. You do not break out of the house. You do not run away from that toxic guy right now. You get your brain right and everything will take care of itself because you will be streaming your abundance. You'll be streaming your freedom from the inside and your intuition that happens in your gut, not your head. From your root, opening up will start to grow out of that fertilizer. And that fertilizer will be powerless to stop you. All right? So let's take some questions. Does anybody have any questions on this theory, which is not a theory, it's proof. Proof, proof, proof. Um, I just want to... Susan, I just want your feedback on this. And I, it's what comes came to mind to me was when I've dealt with clients who have PCOS, polycystic mm -hmm. ovarian syndrome. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear to me in those people, the woman was, they were very hard to get pregnant. And I'm just trying to remember whether yep. it was high fertility issues, 100%. Sis. And they always seem to key up with very kind of effeminate men. They mm -hmm. were trying to be very much the masculine and yet were so resentful of the fact that they had to take care of everything and mm -hmm. he wasn't doing much. So to me, that really um, shows what you're talking about, like as far as the dynamics in, mm -hmm. in every single client that I had, it seemed right. to be that kind of thing that was going. So is that that she has too much estrogen and she's suppressing, but she's trying to be act like a man mm -hmm. in the relationship, and she well, basically pick them like men who really take on the more feminine role. It's not always that they'll pick feminine men because I've had clients that have had real barbaric men with okay. the PCOS. Right. It's victim perpetrator. Like how it shows up on the outside sometimes can look opposite, but usually a very barbaric man is an emasculated man. So yes. So PCOS is basically the, the feminine war of the estrogen and testosterone. And instead of working together, they, they literally attack each other and they create a cyst. Because right. with that type of growth hormone coming at each other with the power of the universe and the literally essentially the eggs, you're, you're going to create a hardened mass that's like tumor. It's like fiber. It's like right. a cyst. And so instead of creating a baby, you're creating something, a density, a rock that is literally purposeless. And so that's kind of what happens is when two very powerful forces are colliding, right? And so what happens in your body, your body is not seeking, your body's not seeking high levels of passion and your body's not seeking high levels of, of 
pain, it's seeking balance always. And so sometimes it gets you balanced by going high and low. So if you have too much estrogen, what will happen is you'll either create too much testosterone outside of you, right? Or you'll try to create it yourself, but then that makes it an infertile environment. It's like if you walk into someone's house and they were talking about having a baby, but the woman was like a victim and he was like yelling, would you want a baby to come in that house? The body's like, no, the oven's not ready. So that infertility comes from this exact balance. Now, cancer comes from this exact balance. Disease comes from this balance because if you're not growing, what are you guys doing? If your body is not growing something outside of you, what is it doing? Destroying. Disease is destruction of self, okay? Pain is I'm hurting one of me. And it's just like, you know, I did back in transcendence days, I did a lot of marriage counseling. I don't know why, but I was called to do it. I had no reason to do it, but I just was so fascinated because they were both right and they were both wrong. And I figured out that the way that I was both gonna help them both was to, to, to teach them separately. When they'd come together, it was like just, you know, it was an allergic reaction, but separately they could both be seen and heard. So I would have her do more on her own instead of blaming him, okay? And then I would have him have his freedom that he would be inspired to help her. And so like even back then, you know, what we're dealing with our own powerful manifestation is showing up in 85% divorce rate, see? And so now we add on feminine repression in our bloodline. Okay, some of you guys who are listening to this on YouTube could be in countries right now where you still have no rights as women, right? So, you know, some of you guys listening to this, men think that women are worthless and vice versa. You know, some women I know that are in, in love with finding their person secretly hate men, you know, or have been so hurt by men. So here's how you can figure out your, your issues, all right? If you're masculine, is extremely atrophied and turned down. You're going to have trouble creating support systems for yourself, money for yourself, time for yourself, freedom for yourself, and sustainability. This is how I figured out my root wounds is I didn't realize that I had created a false masculine inside of me to like, you know, get through life and I couldn't get any relationship to work. I could create a lot, but nothing would last. Nothing would sustain. Nothing was in stone. No foundation. I would move every two years. I would have best friends and I would lose them. You know, it was like every single thing that I could achieve, which was frustrating because as an alpha female, we can achieve the stars, but they disappear. They don't stay. They don't last. They run out. They leave us. They reject us. They Or we do it to them. We leave them. We they they're not good enough for us. We gotta go. We're we're too big. You see. So that's that root wound. Now the masculine, if you noticed, especially in this new generation of situational shifts, masculine men don't want to come, or they don't want they ma emasculated men don't want to commit, or they need the commitment because of the jealousy, right? But the root of why they're with you might only be control. They might not even really want to co-create with you. They might just need something you have, okay? So that can be very off-putting for feminine because she is the essence of the goddess. She is source energy. Like she is everything. She is the most beautiful form in the universe and the masculine going, yeah, I want some of your time and your body, but I don't want to build a life with you or I'll build a life with you, but you got to do it my way or I'll pretend I'll build life with you. But once I get the ring on your finger, I'm not going to do anything. You see, so you've got to look at what you've manifested in your reality with your relationships. And this can happen in a job because there's a masculine dominant and a feminine submissive in your job, in your career, with your money and your time. Remember, how much stuff do you not want that's in your space? That's a feminine wound. How much time are you lacking? Masculine wound. So the idea of healing this is to first and foremost, stop looking at the outside of you as the problem. That, are, that is only that is only grown out of your body. 
That situation with your best friend grew out of your body. That situation with your money grew out of you. But, you know, like sometimes with my garden, the weeds grow, right? Because they have a genetic place in my grounds. I didn't plant them, but they're there. So sometimes when the weeds grow up, they make the yard look not good, right? And they're problems and then they get infested, but some weeds are really good, you see? So your job is to use all of you, all of you. You have to look at where you're not courageous. You have to look at where you're not brave. You have to look at where you're secretly really not strong, okay? Because usually feminine energy is creative through communication and expression, not the physical doing. You know, the physical is going to be like fight, flight, freeze, fawn. <gasps> I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm not strong enough. I can't do it. It's not true. But you weren't supposed to do it all, but you were supposed to do enough. You were supposed to embody your spirit in material and then the, the, the universe would match you, the, the bigger part of the universe, which is you, which means you were supposed to do what you could from your place of awareness and your place of knowing, and then the universe would match and match and match. But guess what's happening? You're doing what you can from your place of awareness and the universe is matching it and it sucks. And you're feeling trapped and stuffed and blocked. So the feminine is feeling blocked. The masculine is feeling stuck. Same issue, different projection and reflection. So does anybody else have a question or this or share on this? Anyone? I have one more thing. <laughs> I never Please, asked questions. Please, absolutely. But, um, can, it, can it change? Like I can feel myself where initially in my life, I thought I was very like masculine and had a lot of energy. I worked at a job and then I, it almost feels like I changed to being more like of the feminine, really developing that. And then I definitely say the masculine has decreased as a result. So can it change yes, or is it just because here's the thing. Yes. Sometimes you have to turn that masculine up. Okay. And what's accepted in your family is not accepted in society. You see, so like, okay, for me, I had to turn my feminine up and I needed to not behave out of alignment in my house. Like I could dream all I wanted to and behind closed doors, but the way that I showed up was very controlled, which means my masculine was not the creator. My uh, feminine was the creator of my imagination, but I could never really act out anything. Okay. Now that was the only way that I could survive my first seven years. We'll now put that same story into school or put that same story into a job now. Sometimes you have to shape shift it. Sometimes you have to flip it, right? And so you have to get very masculine in your life, okay? And in that way you're doing the emasculated, emasculation is then you get, then you get like rejected for being too strong, you see? So this is why the extremes are always gonna be found in the pain body. All right, because it's like, okay, I've got, I'm too feminine, I gotta be more hostile. Now I'm too masculine, I gotta be more feminine. And instead of going, no, I need to be the 50% of both or the 40, 60, we don't ever think that way because the ego never thinks in rational balance. Balance is boring. Balance is, doesn't get you high. You either wanna be this or you wanna be that. That's very third dimensional separation. So what happens is you're wounding that starts off one way, well, then it's unacceptable in another way. And so you have to learn to bend around or hide another part of yourself or you're ashamed for being too masculine. And so then you're feminine. So when we have all these androgynous kids coming out that are going, I'm starting off as a girl, but the, by the time I wanna be a boy, this is a byproduct of repressed inner war of self. And they're trying to express themselves through embodiment now through the collective, this is very normal. And so that very balanced masculine and feminine is what you are actually seeking because that's the flow. That's, you have an idea, you can, man you can create it. You have a big vision, you have all the resources. You have an idea, you have support. You see, that's what's gonna keep you flowing. But if you keep having ideas and there's just walls here, right? that's going to create a war inside because that energy is still flowing 150 miles an hour, but the body, the masculine is like, nope. And so then it's smacking in. And if you've ever seen a woman scorned, she will destroy everything. 
just like the man will, to create it new. I want to destroy all the evidence of the pain. So this is what disease is, you guys, is it's, it's self-destruction in hopes to create new. Because when a cell is destroyed, a new one is created. But see, what we don't remember is that we are creating the new cell in the blueprint. So the older we get, the older our stories get, I should say, the more pain that we're actually building from new cells. This is why generational, right? The, the mutation and the malfunction of the human not being in harmony with nature is going to create genetic species that is having malfunctional issues with feminine and masculine energy, all right? And yeah, you can say it's through, you know, through drugs or whatever or vaccines but ultimately it's it's literally happening from an organic place of destruction internally all right and it will malfunction to to create a flat line because again it's like i said once the virus of the trauma impacts all of your cellular memory down into your subatomic space the only way that the soul can express itself is to have a death rebirth experience because it's just too, it's it's too poisoned. Like the body gets too poisoned. It just starts to like, now it's just overflowing. And if you don't have that co-creative belief system of yourself, you'd rather just go get a new body. All right. It's, you just want to destroy it. Like, I just want to mess it all up. Like, you know, you start with a white piece of paper and you start drawing on it and you go the wrong way. What's your first instinct? Get a new piece of paper. Well, your soul feels like that with your body. A lot of the times I just need to get a new clean slate here, or I need to go move, or I need to change my hair, or I need to lose weight. I, you're, you're craving that fresh start. But see what, when you manifest failure, you take that as a negative. You're like, I failed again. But that's what you were going for because it wasn't actually what you wanted. It was never what you wanted, or you would have never failed or, dis or created failure there. See, a lot of the jobs, professions, hobbies, and people that we're with in our life comes from being broken. So when we notice that we're creating from a broken place, we kind of want to destroy it. Haven't you ever felt yourself sabotaging something? You're like, why am I sabotaging this? It's because secretly you don't want it, but you believe it's all you can have. I need the help. Well, I can't pay my bills without this guy. Well, then, okay, why are you not fixing it? Why are you sabotaging it, you see? So it's always, always, always what you're doing is having a co-creative destruction result if you're not actually creating what you want. This is why it won't sustain. This is why you feel like a failure or a fraud at times. This is why you know so much, but you can't do it. This is why you feel so intelligent and so ignorant. This is why you feel so enlightened and so judgy. This is why you feel so polar opposite of yourself because that opposites attract okay so like when i'm using magnets and healing if you have one side that is the the force of connection you can't get them apart that's attachment when you turn it on the other side it creates a buffer right this like little force field that's connection right and so when the masculine gets to be masculine and the feminine gets to be feminine, we get to be unique, but we get to do that inside of ourselves and create babies called projects, dreams, passions, purpose, homes, children, life, who get to grow things instead of destroy things. So I want you to look at your current life right now. You are either on path of destroying something or you are on path of creating something. Okay. If you are creating, it's getting bigger, you're having more health, you're having more time, you're having more money. If you think you're creating something, but you're actually destroying it, I want you to take a look at that. You're investing, but it's not coming back. You're putting money in, but it's not coming back. You're giving a lot of your energy, but it's not coming back. You're talking a lot to your partner, but it's not being remembered or demonstrated. You're actually, even though you think you are creating, you're actually in destruction. And the soul looks at it like this. The soul is ageless, timeless, immortal. It doesn't care what you do with the body. It just wants to create harmony at some point. So the evolution of planet Earth is to create unity, not out there, in here, central hard drive. Then the feminine and masculine will co-create a new world here. You will do that inside of your own body first. 
you will create heaven on earth inside your own body. You will fall in love with your own opposition first. Light and dark, dark and light. You'll create a baby. That baby will be purpose. It'll be mission. It'll be art. It will be an invention. It will be something that will help the world do this faster. Everything you create from co-creating with your masculine is a biohack, which means someone else doesn't have to figure it out. It's now manifested and someone can pull from it, use it. And that's how we are all inventors. We're all genius. We're all artists. We're all psychic. We're all telepathic if we're balanced. Balance is not anything that the pain body wants. Pain body lives in starvation, need, want, and shame, guilt, resentment. That's it. That's all it knows how to do. If you are in resentment in your marriage, are you creating it or destroying it? Just be honest. If you resent your partner, are you slowly creating it even though you think things are getting better? If you still resent him, you are destroying it. Okay? If you feel resented by someone else and you keep putting your life force energy in that relationship with the fawn or friend, you're destroying yourself. Okay? If you keep putting in money to something that's supposed to make you balanced, you're going to end up destroying your money. Now, if you put something in with money that comes from balance, it's about to multiply. It's about to get global. Does this make sense? Whatever you put your energy to, you multiply. But if you are not whole or connected, you're secretly destroying something so that you can start over. You just don't know you are because you didn't realize you were settling in the first place. Okay? A lot of times you settle and you make such a big mess for yourself that you can't get out of it. You've spent too much money. You've spent too much time. You've, you know, you've talked too much about it and now you're stuck. Well, that's what we call pride. We talked about that last week. Pride versus being proud. So emasculated, over-emasculated feminine, emasculated male will live in a state of pride. They don't want you to know that they can't do. They're perfect. They're perfectionists. They're academics. They're extreme. They're extremists. Okay? And then you've got your whole part of the other side of the equation of what's the point? Who cares? Let's watch TV and get drunk for the rest of our lives. You've seen both sides of this. Now, you've got to find where you're doing this inside of yourself. Notice where you're paying attention to the, other, the opposite sex, where you're in judgment. Find that within yourself. Not what they're doing, but the vibration, right? Is your partner a know-it-all? Is your partner lazy? Is your partner sick? Is your partner broke, right? You've got to look at the metaphor of that and go, this is how my masculine actually is because like attracts like and I attract what I am, not what I want. Remember, I'm attracting from the fibers of the material that I have. So if you are not balanced, you are definitely not in a balanced relationship. Your money is definitely not balanced and harmonized. Your business is definitely not in harmony. Your relationship and family dynamic is definitely not in harmony. You can see how it's going to affect every area of your life. Now, we've been all doing this for a very long time, and that's what the government was created out of. That was the baby we created. It's our mess, but we cannot clean it up from the outside. We have to clean it up from the inside, where we self-govern, where we fall madly in love. So the way that you do this is you have to go into accepting first where you are atrophied and dominant, okay, where you are doing too much and doing too little. You've got to find that within yourself. And then what you've got to do is you've got to go back and figure out what you need to do to create healthy balance and masculine and maybe calm down the feminine. And the way that you can do that is last week, I taught you guys about hormones, about channeling energy, like giving the feminine a place to express herself if she can't build a global business right now. She's got to have a place to express. He's got to have something to build. You've got to be building something. If you want to take a masculated man and give him life, you've got to let him be a man, right? And I don't mean like the idea of third dimensional man. I mean, provider, protector, fixer, builder, creator. And you got to figure out where you're being repressed or you don't know how to do those things. And this is where growth is. It's scary because you're going to be a rookie. You're going to be a rookie. Like I have had an online community, a school, very etherical, very virtual. I just had to wear a shirt, no pants, come in, turn on a video, channel my divine feminine for 12 years, make a million dollars here and there. And that was okay. 
Nothing sustainable, guys. If the internet goes down, my entire body of work is gone. It wasn't until I did quantum fitness on myself that I was like, I got to create something real. I got to create something that sticks. I got to create something that's going to be here when I'm not here. I got to get put something in the ground and let it grow. And then that's when I started healing my masculine. And the masculine is who built quantum fitness. My masculine built the seven physical steps. The feminine built the seven emotional steps. Together, it's a co-creation and it's working because it's about balancing you. It's not an imbalance. Guess what? And so if I'm not balanced, my whole life looks like this. Okay. High and low. High and low. What, what happens if it's balanced? Can you run on this road? Is this a bridge that you could cross over now? Yes. This is what you're seeking. This doesn't feel good to ego. This feels unfun and not fun. And ugh. it feels like a rookie. It feels like I don't know what I'm doing. It feels like it's scary because you have to balance. So one of the ways that you actually bring your brain into harmony is you practice your own balance. Okay. We use balance boards in quantum fitness to practice, to meditate on, to do breath work on. When you're having to balance that brain, okay, one is governing time and space, one is governing abundance and freedom, is going to come together and have to work together to keep you balanced and centered. We're also going to work on balancing the root chakra so that it can open up, right? So you can look at a lot of things. If you look up what brings the, the harmony to masculine and feminine, art, music, color, Rhythm, dance, song, right? Nature, balance, anything that is dark and light coming together and meeting in the middle to make something is balance of feminine and masculine. Think about it. You've got music notes and you've got music sounds, right? You've got space between each music notes. The notes are masculine, the space is feminine. That's what creates the song. You couldn't have notes all together, it would be icky. You can have no notes, it would be nothing. So you need exact harmony to create the masculine, the feminine balance is the baby. When you are balanced, you're about to create such a big world that you're going to be going 150 miles an hour, but you're going to have money, time, health, and friends. It's a very crazy feeling, okay? When you are not balanced, you just keep digging yourself out of the hole you just got in. You got, it's feast or famine. It's wrong. It's right. It's 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. Okay. Is everybody understanding this? Because so many metaphysical students don't understand that they're creating with them their own body. They still think that they're creating with some universe outside of them. The universe is here and it's made of source energy and genetic material. And this is all you got. It's all you got. Your beef is not with God. Your beef is with the masculine, feminine in harmony. That's it. So this makes it easy for everyone. This is not like, well, I was chosen. I was not chosen, okay? I chose myself, right? Oh, well, he can do something I can't. He's practiced longer. He didn't care like looking like an idiot like you do. You're too worried about looking stupid, right? Like I could barely see, speak clearly or write when I started doing this, but I was like, I gotta do it. Otherwise I'm gonna explode, you see? So when you don't care how stupid you look, that's when your life's about to thrive. When you don't care about messing up and not being perfect, you're about to create something that you actually really love, all right? Every single person that has finished quantum fitness has become some sort of artist, inventor, or creator after one week. Now, that was already inside of them. I did not create that. That gave them permission, expression, and integration to actually do something about what was inside of them. It was always in there. They just couldn't do anything about it. Now, this. And this switch is on. Now I get it. Now I can do it. Doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean it's not challenging. But they also have that protective builder inside of them that is courageous enough to keep showing up as they're practicing their new genius. This is what I'm seeing every single time someone goes through the biohacking experience all the way to completion, which is one solid week. This is what I'm seeing in every single one of you. You did not come in more, you did not leave more of a genius. You came in as a cape, you left, you leave as a capable genius. You leave as someone who knows that they can do it now. As the harmony of the darkest part and the lightest part together make art. That's your 
signature for the world. That's your purpose, to bring your darkest point, your lightest point together, unify it, make something with it, anything. Even if it's just clean up the ocean, it doesn't matter what it is. The inspired nation, that nature of your soul is going to create that child and it's not going to trigger you because most of you got a kid that triggers you and a kid that inspires you will go to the kid that triggers you and look at their brain where they turned down, turned up, bipolar, it's not bipolar. It's, it's literally just the yin and the yang that is competing for dominance. And this is the true, true relationship of masculine and feminine. In the times of vision, feminine is dominant. In the times of action, masculine is dominant. And that is what we all dream of. I want to be submissively safe to be led in the direction of these dreams. I want to be provided for, for my, my bounty of information that I have. I want to be appreciated. So masculine, appreciated, feminine attention. She needs attention or she'll blow up the world. He needs appreciation or he'll be lazy. Okay. Does this resonate with you guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down, just you're crazy, whatever. It's what I got for you today. This has been the ultimate experience for me because I was able to create a pretty big life with as an alpha female. Okay. But I could not create a relationship. I even had one guy tell me that there was no room in my life for a man because there was already one there. And I was like, what, Luke? He's like, no, you. I'm like, what? He's like, you do everything. I can't do anything. You've already done it. You, are, you do it for me, so I don't have to do it. I'm like, but I thought that was love, right? No, let me be a man, you know? And don't ask whining for help. See, a man wants to give help when you don't ask for it. They want it to be intuitive. They want to feel it from their gut that you need it. They don't want you to give them a honey-do list. They don't want to be pushed in the direction. If you push their freedom, they shut down. If you take their time, they shut down. But if you turn them on in a way where they so believe in the vision of your life together, they will intuitively bring you everything you want and you will never have to ask. And first, you have to do this with yourself, which means you got to show up, you got to get up, you got to man up, you got to you know, stop being the emasculated hidden man in the big dominant dragon lady body. Okay. You got to stop hiding inside of your body and you got to turn on your light because the only one at the end of the day that needs to be proud of you is you. You're going to close your eyes and be your own father. I'm so proud of you. I, I'm going to hold you when no one's there because in the beginning, when you're co-creating this unity, you're going to find yourself feeling very alone because your higher self will remove everyone out of the way. So this intervention can happen. Okay, because if you've got a big dominant male energy in your reality, you're not going to pay attention to you. You're going to blame him. So this will help you start working on chiseling away that pain body because a healthy relationship is going to grow a big family. All right. A toxic relationship is going to create so much destruction. Think about it. In our generation, we come from 10 generations of farmers, 10 generations of this. And then we were, we're having kids and they are like, nope, I am not going to be a farmer. They will sell the company as soon as their parents die. They want nothing to do with their lineage. Are you noticing that? Because it is so toxic that no one is proud of their last name anymore. They're more like, I'm related to so-and-so. They're trying to destroy the lineage so they can start new because it was pretty aberrated and pretty broken. Even though they were proud of their name, it was all done by control. This is about unity and flow. This is about allowing. This is about connection, not attachment, not suffering, not power struggles. See, when you are gonna be the most abundant and free in your life is when you are the most balanced. And that is never gonna be you going, I need something. Now, I want, but I'm okay with what is, is your secret secret ingredient that's why i said it last week you want to manifest something you've got to be content with what is and excited for what's coming which means that if i don't have someone to do this for me right now i better learn how to do it so that i don't need someone to do it and i'm still walking forward and the universe will say i'll meet you halfway which means by the time you've gotten your foundation built the universe takes care of all the rest and you just sail all right so right now i'm putting in the foundation and i'm tired and i'm doing a lot of stuff that i don't want to do right now but i know 
that I'm learning a lot about myself becoming this. I'm stretching my masculine energy, not from the theoretical power, but from physical brunt. I'm lifting things and carrying things. I've never been in the best shape of my life as I am now. And I'm proud of myself of what I do with that body versus just having a body. It's like, okay, now I can do stuff with my body that I couldn't do before. And from that, my mind is getting quieter and my body is getting stronger. So this is like one of the after effects. I'm going to leave you guys here and stop talking. You've got all your diagrams, all right? You're probably going to have questions, but I want you to go down your white rabbit rabbit hole tonight or this week, and I want you to pay attention to your patterns here. If you cannot find your patterns, look at your relationship patterns. The condition and health of your brain in unity is going to be found in the relationships that you live in. Are you a narcissistic mother to an emasculated son inside of here? Find it. Okay, own it, accept it. I love myself anyways. I didn't know I was doing that. Let's let's clean the slate. Let's get this relationship back on board. I can use this outside relationship as my mirror to go do my work. I can look at where I'm actually avoiding, where I'm terrified, where I'm afraid, where I'm a bully. And I can pay attention to that. And then I can love myself anyways. You are here to create your darkest point and your lightest point. You're not going to get rid of darkness. You're going to use it. Okay, density. You want to materialize heaven. That's why you came. You did not come to go back to heaven real quick. You came to bring it here, anchored into material. I infest the matter with my creation, my essence. The essence of your soul is what you want to bring to earth. You don't want to go do a job. You want to be. You want to create, okay? And create, right, is so important. And this is why in quantum fitness, first, we have to destroy a lot of it. We have to destroy a lot of the broken blueprint, all of the baby cells that have been made with this abusive family so that when we get this balance, then we create new cells. The, the new cells don't have the old blueprint. It takes sometimes three months, but it works. All right, guys, you can do this. All of your pictures are either in the comments of YouTube, they're on your website dashboard, or they're in your Facebook messenger. You're going to have to open them up and play with them and try to Look at my diagrams. I think I did a pretty good job. Not everything's spelled correct, but who cares? You get the idea. All right. I love you guys. And I will see you all next week. See you soon.